Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Sunday afternoon evening mountain weather update. A couple of live cameras first, just to set the table. So this is the view from Grand Targhee at the base area. Grand Targhee sits on the west side of the Tetons, and they're not open yet. They're, I believe, opening November 22nd, uh, and they're just waiting on more natural snow up there at Grand Targhee. But that's the view at the base. Let me show you the Teton view. And you'll notice it is kind of cloudy. There's a tiny little sliver of precip, a little energy kind of moving through the northern tier. I'll show it to you on radar, but I love this view. You can see the Grand there and Middle Teton. Uh, just a great view from the west side on that Teton view. That's actually the view from Idaho. Let me take you into the Wasatch. So this is uh, Solitude. There's Honeycomb Canyon. What a beautiful day up there in the Wasatch. Oh, and I should mention... Tetons, you have new snow coming with this cold front on 11-12, and that holds true for the Wasatch as well. It's dry now, uh, but the next shot of snow is on 11-12 for both the Tetons and the Wasatch. And um, let me show you radar right now. So the next real storm system is just now moving into the, uh, the Pacific Northwest and BC. You can see some of the rain showing up on radar. Also notice through Idaho, just a tiny little bit of precip. That's what is what's creating that cloud cover across the Tetons right now. That's largely going to slide through with little to no impact. So really, it's what's happening up in the Pacific Northwest. Let me uh, give you the lay of the land here. This is the, the water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, the moisture loft is in the whites and the blues, and there's that tiny little area of precip. This is the real storm system. This is what's directing traffic right now. And it's got a lot of jet support, big trough with it. It's going to send out some energy out ahead of it, and that'll become the front that dives down through Idaho, hits the uh, the Wasatch, the Tetons, and then eventually Colorado. So Tetons, Wasatch 11-12, and then 11-12, 11-13 in Colorado. There's also another low behind it. And an interesting shift from this morning, it now looks like one or both of these lows will send energy down into the southern tier and become a southern track storm. So we're going to be dealing with weather on the northern tier and the southern tier during this time period. Okay, here's my latest odds of best, uh, or just best shots of snow, basically, the timeline for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, New Mexico, and Tahoe. So, for example, in the Tetons, I'm forecasting light to moderate accumulations on 11-12. 11-15, 11-16, light to moderate accumulations, and then light accumulations on 11-18. And then notice what's happening on the southern branch. So, uh, down in New Mexico, 11.17 heavy accumulation, light to moderate accumulation on 11.19. So we're dealing with both prongs, both of them. Um, here is the forecast radar and satellite. So let's take a look at this. This is by 5.30. Um, you can see a tiny little area precip up in the northern tier. That basically evaporates. It's all about this storm system right here. So this is 11.11 in the afternoon. Notice uh, that front and that energy actually does brush Shasta and parts of Tahoe. And then that's going to move through the interior into Idaho. And notice BC's on, getting in on the action as well. And then here it comes. This is 11-12. By the morning hours, it is already snowing across the Wasatch, the Tetons, Idaho, and Big Sky. Still snowing up in BC. Hasn't quite made it to uh, Colorado at that point, but it's there now. So it's a really fast-moving front. Like I was saying this morning, it's so fast that I'm worried about accumulations. It now looks like it's got just a little more punch. So even though it's fast, I had to bring up some of the numbers. I increased some of the totals. Um, so there it is on 11, 12 in the afternoon. And then it slides out. And then it becomes about the next storm system. So this is 11, 13 in the afternoon. Um, that moves across the northern tier. But watch what happens. It sends some energy to the south. This is 11, 15 in the morning. Look at the Sierra getting in on the action. That low hits part of the inner mountain. You can see some of the energy going north into Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and the Wasatch, but watch what happens on the southern branch. All of a sudden, this energy pops up over New Mexico and Colorado, and that develops. Watch what happens. That develops into a storm system by 1118 over Colorado, New Mexico. That could be snow for Denver. And then there's another storm system coming in on its coattails. You can see all the snow to the west, and then that becomes its own storm system by 1118, 1119, and that could blow up into something as well. So the pattern is remaining remarkably active. 
all the way through 1119, 1120. And in many ways, it is still mirroring this La Nina light pattern that I'm expecting through most of the winter. Here are my latest numbers. So rest of today through tomorrow, light accumulations for the Sierra Northern Tier. The best accumulations are up in parts of BC, along the coastal range, Baker, uh, up to Whistler. Second time period is very active. There's a lot of caveats with this. A lot of the numbers have gone up because now we're dealing with now the southern branch becomes more active. Uh, and not only that, but let me just explain from start to finish. So this is 1112 to 1119. First, you have that cold front on 1112. That's a little bit stronger. Now, I bumped up some of the numbers. So, you know, the numbers you see in the Wasatch of a foot or more, that's because we're looking at two or three different events accumulating to that. Uh, those numbers. It doesn't all happen at once. Tetons numbers are up 8 to 14. They're through Big Sky. Northwest Montana, anywhere in purple is a foot or more. In Colorado, you're going to see light accumulations with this cold front on 11, 12, 13. Then bigger numbers come from the Southern Track Storm System, both of them, from like 11, 17, 18, and 19. That's where the bulk of the accumulation happens in Colorado and Northern New Mexico. Uh, in the Sierra, again, there's a couple different events that accumulate to those numbers, but big stuff for the Pacific Northwest and BC, that hasn't changed. I'm still expecting one, two, three, maybe even four feet of snow in some places. Interior BC does very well. Less snow as you drop down into the Banff area, and I like what I'm seeing still for a lot of central to northern Idaho. Looking good there with potentially 8 to 14, maybe 8 to 16 inches of uh, snow accumulation. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this Sunday afternoon evening mountain weather update. Appreciate you tuning in here. Take care.